Welcome back to another episode of the Credit Pearls podcast. Today we have Karen, founder and director of Lash Dolls. Hi, Thank you, Karen, Shane. for being here. Thank you. I met Karen, um, what did we about a year ago? Yeah. We met through Instagram, we became friends, we've done the same mentoring course yes. as each other. Um, so it just kicked off from there and I just really admire your business and your work and how Thank much you. you've grown it. It's absolutely fantastic. So well done. Thank you so much. Um, so generally what we do is we have a little chat about you, yeah. where you grew up, what you were like, how you started your business. And really the idea of this is to give other people listening, business owners, leaders, founders, inspiration and ideas about how you built your business yeah um because i think we all go through turbulent times we do in business and we need guidance yes and it's great to have somebody in our country and um, that sounds and looks like us yeah and um yeah so that can be a great inspiration yeah so Amazing. we kick off tell us a little bit about yourself where you're from all of that a little bit about your background. okay um so i'm karen grahan i'm from blanchestown originally I um, grew up there, very humble family, Again, like just, most of us. Yeah, yeah. just really hard working mum and dad. Um, my dad then like set up his own company then okay. after years, after we were kind of in secondary school and stuff like that. Um, so we moved then from Blanchestown down to Castlenock. And, and we, what business did he have? So my dad was in Borgosh for okay. over 20, 30 years and took a contract from Borgosh and set up his own gas company. Okay, very good. Called The Gas Man. So that's oh. going over 25 years now. Are you still going? Yes. Oh my God, still I going. love it. Yeah. yeah. So his business just took off literally from day one because they were on a contract with Borgosh. Okay. He set up the business within a couple of years. We had moved. the experience. Yes, yeah. he had the experience behind him. Himself and his mm. brother took the redundancy from the gas company, set up their own company and our whole life's kind of changed okay, really like, it. yeah. Like my dad studied really hard, worked really hard all our grown up lives. Mm. And as we were kind of getting older, we were able to move then. So we moved down to Laurel Lodge in Castlenock and we've been there ever since my parents okay. and stuff. Um, so yeah, we had an amazing Love upbringing. upbringing. Yeah. yeah, just really, really good. Great childhood. Kind of got everything we wanted, even okay. though they had nothing really to give. Yeah, but, but it, we were happy yeah, kids. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Loved going to school in primary school. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it was just really good. It was really easy life. Okay. And secondary school, same, easy? Secondary school, I absolutely hated. Okay. Um, I was put into an all-girls convent oh. <laughs> to keep me sane <laughs> or to keep me to away from boys. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, which completely backfired because I was absolutely, no, I had no interest in school. Okay. At all. I didn't get anything from it. Okay. It just didn't do anything for me, personally. Right. And was it the structure or was it the academic side that you didn't like? It was both. It was both. Yes, it was both. I just think um, for me, going in to like that routine of like the same class on a Monday, the same class, you know, yeah. like it was just too structured. Yeah, um, too restricted. And very, very strict. Very strict. We had nuns majority of the time. Yeah. And I, I'm showing my age now. But um, yeah, it was just really, really strict. And I just think I didn't really get anything from it. Okay. Like I actually am quite smart, but I just really couldn't push myself to school at all. Everybody, the structure no. of it, it really doesn't. And yeah. The more I look, the more I meet people, and the more I even look at my own children, it just doesn't suit everybody. Yeah. It's, no. It, you know, people learn in different ways, yes. and unless you fit into this category, yeah, that you can sit there and look at a book and read it. I didn't love secondary school either. It was kind of the same. Yeah. Um, I loved the social side of it. We were in a mixed school. Yeah. And I loved the social side, but I didn't love. You know, it just a lot of it didn't make sense. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Yeah. I just don't know how this is going to, you know, yeah. help me in real life. I That's it. A lot of people felt like yeah. that. Yeah. There is no experience for us in school, in no. secondary school, to make us, I suppose, into adults going out into the real world. Yeah. And, Do you and, know? Yeah, I don't think it really prepares you, does it, for life? Not at all. Not at all. No. no. There was nothing that I got from school. I left school and I literally hadn't got a clue what I was going to do. What did you do then? I actually left and went to Borgosh, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> really? I got in on a, I actually went and did a sales and marketing course. I didn't want to go to college. Okay. School was that bad. I was so like, I, I, I just need to get again. a job yeah. and I need to make money like now. Yeah. So I went, my dad wouldn't let me kind of just go straight into a job. He was like, you need to go and do something else, a little yeah. bit of experience. Yeah. Um, so I enrolled in a um, private um, sales and marketing course. Okay. Did that. And from that, I had to get like a six weeks work experience. Got into Borgosh. Absolutely lo loved it. Like I would think I was one of the first young people they'd ever hired in years. Okay, really? So I got in there and sure, I basically took over the place. Yeah. It was amazing. But I was the same. I loved work. When yeah. I left school and started work, I always really enjoyed work and I worked hard. I didn't, 
I just could see the. I could see I am doing this because of that. Yeah. Like I'm going to get sales in. It's going to help the business grow. Yes. I'm going to like I was always in finance and collecting money. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I understood what I was doing and it made sense. Exactly. Yeah. But for school, I was the same. Yeah, I was like, exactly the same. Yeah. And I just couldn't wait to get into my first job. Yeah. And as soon as I got in the door there, sure, they let me go after the six weeks and then on the Friday and then took me back on the Monday Did full they? time. Oh my I was God. there for five years then and probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. Really? I You're so young just, and enthusiastic. Yes, yeah. and I was just like able to kind of, I was in there, I was learning all these new skills, meeting new people, you're on phones, dealing with the public. I just loved every minute of yeah. it and took every single course that they offered me. Did you? I did everything while I was there. Yeah, there was so much um, evolving within the gas Isn't company. Isn't that brilliant though that, they, yeah. that you could learn? Yes, yeah. they put you through different departments every couple of months. They would transfer you into like marketing. Then you could be in sales. You could be on the phones. You could be in the front of house dealing with the customers coming in to pay their bills years yeah. ago in Delir yeah. Street. Um, I just absolutely loved it. Oh, my God. I love um, the sound of that. And there's so many life skills that you're learning in that customer service. Yes. How to dispute resolution. Everything. Yes. You're learning so yeah. much yeah. in that amazing. environment. And when you're that age, you're just like a sponge. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just embraced every minute of it. I loved it. Brilliant. Yeah. And then what happened? Where did you go? And then I decided I want to be an air hostess. <laughs> yeah. So I just went through this mad phase. I want to try something different. I want to kind of leave home and I want to move away and get a yeah. job. So I got a job at British Airways, moved to London. Oh God, you actually look like an air hostess. And oh no. And that was such the job back then. Yes. It was such a glamorous, yeah. really glamorous It was all job. about, it was just all about the glam. Yeah. Even though when I look back now, I only found my picture and it is the most ugly outfit oh, like oh really? my god three quarter length dress like this but anyway British Airways was very strict but the okay. training element of it really like changed everything for me it was it was really kind of like going back into a school room um, okay, environment so what kind of training did they do we had to do everything a lot of theory so classroom training learn all about the aircraft it was really intense okay we did about eight weeks of training um in classrooms, then we had to go like to pools, do your swimming, all that kind of stuff for life saving. Okay. Um, so it was a lot, wow. yeah, it was a lot, a lot involved. So you had to actually pass all of that to even get to fly. Wow. So that I was know that. super tough. Even yeah. with the swimming? Everything. Yeah, it was really wow. hard. Yeah, so okay. that kind of like knocked me for six because yeah. I wasn't expecting I thought, you just go straight over and off you go. Yeah, you're on the plane. Yeah, and you're, like, and you're all glam. Yes. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that at all. So I lasted around a year in London. I was, was living it tough? With, yeah, it was very hard. I was away from my first time ever away from home. Yeah. I was trying to prove a point to my dad because I, I was like, I want probably, it. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I just decided, right, I'm coming home because I I just wasn't schedule. enjoying it. Yeah. yeah, you were up at four in the morning. You know, you were doing European flights for the first kind of year and then you'd move on to international flights, but I didn't even get that far. I just wanted to come home. Okay. Um, I enjoyed parts of it. I enjoyed like you the, a lot, probably. yes, you learned an awful lot and you also learn a lot about yourself when you're yeah. left by yourself and you have to offend I for know, yourself for the first time ever. Yeah, and yeah. in London, different in Ireland, yes. completely different. I was afraid to leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was amazing. And then I came home and I got a job in Citibank and I spent six years in Citibank. Okay. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. amazing. And then I started having kids. Yeah, I know. Then so, that's the, yes. Yeah. So then I kind of I stayed there for six years and um, had my first little boy and decided to look for a job nearer to home. So PayPal were actually coming to Ireland at the time. Yeah. And I was one of the first 25 people to be recruited wow. by them. So we literally got in there and it was like you kind of could pick and choose whatever job you wanted really at the time. And um, so we were kind of set up into different groups and I took on like a customer service role and um, within risk management and stuff and um escalations and stuff so like people that would pay by PayPal if they didn't get their goods or they were disputing a fee we would look into all that kind of stuff okay so I kind of worked my way up yeah, yeah it was amazing I worked myself up in there to um a supervisor position and I was there for five years and I was doing training part of it as well um but I wasn't a qualified trainer but I would train the new staff coming in and yeah. that for me was like you loved it. it was like I just knit, uh, hit the nail on the head yeah, when it came so to this is for me I just love the training element of the business um, it wasn't just about their business. It was actually just actually teaching people. I okay. absolutely loved it. And um, so I was kind of in between a lot of different roles in there as well, which was really good. I got so much experience. 
And I decided then to take the leap of faith and kind of go and do something completely different because I started having the kids like yeah. and I was there for five years. There was redundancies coming up and I was kind of like, you know, I had an interest in beauty. Never did anything beauty before in my life. I just were glamorous, liked glamour. But I just liked, to yes, yeah. yeah. And like a friend of mine owned a salon in Castanac Village and I started kind of doing a little bit of work for her doing reception and stuff on a Thursday evening on Saturdays. And just the, con I think the combination of one to one dealing with clients walking in, mm. I was kind of in that scenario of the beauty industry and yeah. I just loved it. Yeah. And then a thing called eyelash extensions then yes. came on the market and I went and started looking up courses. There wasn't really anything for the first little while. Then I found a course okay. and went and trained in that and it was absolutely brutal. Like, I mean, I came out of the course. 500 pounds down yeah. and hadn't a clue what I was doing. So I decided just to kind of self-teach me, you know, okay, just self-teach. Yeah. And I spent months and months and months in our little sitting room in the house with five young kids in the other room yeah. and me stuck in there with the door locked and um, practicing every single day. And I did that for a few months and then I asked for redundancy within okay. the company. They didn't want to kind of let us go. Yeah. But I, you know, I had a lot going on. I had five young kids and I really wanted just a little bit of a change. I needed something. Where you could work around the kids. Yes. And that's really important. Yeah. That is the biggest barrier to women going back to work yeah. after they have kids. It's the restrict, like you have to be here nine to five kids. Or yes. Six, school, play school, high temperature today, whatever it is. Yes. It's very difficult. And then the supervisor role also, I felt horrible having to ring in sick when they were sick yeah. because you have responsibility of a team of 30 or 40 people yeah you know and then you have managers you have to answer to as well but also the beauty side of it was kind of starting to interest me a little bit more yeah. i was looking at different things and um, i love that you can change so much like that i love that i think that's brilliant just to go from one thing to another yeah. that's brilliant that you're able to change put yourself in a new situation yeah. adapt and succeed in that and then yes. okay I've done loads in this I kind of want something new now yeah Love I it. kind of in every job that I've been in I've gotten to the position that I went in looking for yeah and then went right I need I need to move on now. yeah I think I'm I, this is yes. it now what's next yeah yeah so Love I've it. always kind of done that within the jobs that I've been in yeah um, and I've tried everything I have tried every job yeah. under the sun and I loved all of them but now I am in where so I'm meant to tell be. us so that was the foundation of lash yes. dolls yes where you just started a little side hustle from the house from the house yes and then what happened you so I kept that going so I took redundancy mm. and from the redundancy I was able to kind of like set up a little room in the house properly buy my bed yes. and all my bits that I needed and I kept that going um, part time for so at the time we were just doing eyelash extensions yes yeah. just from the house part time even while I was still working in PayPal so I did that for probably about a year and then when I got the redundancy I decided to go and register my business and I just did that off a whim. I was like, hadn't a clue even about business. I was like in I'm the house one day, this. just gonna yeah. register my business name here. And that yeah. kind of got me a bit excited. And I was like, oh my God, there's so much I can do here. Yeah. And it was like as if a bomb went off my head. Really? And I was like, just all this creative stuff start coming out. Stuff I never even thought I had inside yeah. me. Great. It was so weird, but I think it was because I knew it was mine. It was new, yeah. it was something for me and I was building something for myself and my family. Yeah, it's and a different, it's a completely different mindset. Yeah, completely, completely different. yeah. There's not enough hours in the day to work. No, there's not. And I could literally have 70 businesses going at the moment if I could yeah, get make, all the ideas. Yes, or yeah. if I could have a million of me. Yeah. Do you know, but um, yeah, so I just kind of decided to register my business and really put a lot of effort into getting clients and all that kind of stuff. The business, to be honest, took off from day one. Um, I think a lot of people knew me, I suppose, from the village, yeah. just from being with the kids and stuff like that. But I contacted a lady in our local gym, small little gym, Rattout Village is tiny, and asked her, did she want to model for me for a set of lash extensions? At the time, that was back in 2009, maybe coming into yeah. 2010. No one they, nobody even knew what they were. So I brought her in, did a set of lashes, spent probably four hours. Oh my God, I was nearly crying after it. My back yeah. was broken and everything. Anyway, she went into work that evening and within two weeks, I was fully booked. Like I mean, she went into this class of about 20 or 30 women. How smart were you though to pick her? Yeah, I because knew, I knew. Yes. Women were going in there. Yeah. Everybody's going to see her. She probably was very glamorous and well yeah. known. And then it was like everyone Everybody knew her, yeah. yeah. And she also had a yoga room as well. So she was going between the two. So she got me a lot of clients and I always give her a praise. So hi, June. Yeah, yeah. Um, every, any podcast I've done, I always talk about June. But she really like set the bar for my business. Like she went in doing this like yoga class or whatever and ladies were coming up to her at the end of the class oh my god what did you do to your eyes and it was this whole big thing about the lashes, the lashes. and she just gave out my number and that was it so I was getting booking after booking after booking and 
it just got that busy that I was only working two, maybe three evenings a week because the kids were so small. So I went having to get a minder then for the kids in the house and I was working probably six days a week then. And that kind of like was literally within the first six, seven months. It just was mental. And from that- Because it's the one industry, no matter what is going on in the economy. Yeah. People will still get their beauty done. Yes, Women they will. still want yeah. lashes, eyebrows, hair, yeah. whatever it is, yes. you still want it done. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No. Yeah. No, I'm it doesn't matter. for my nails yes, and hair it. whatever. Yeah. I would. I like, would. it's so funny. It's And even with the lashes, because our clients won't leave the salon until they have rebooked for the next appointment. Oh, I know. Because they're afraid they won't get yeah. in again. And like, you know, then they feel they... naked without the lashes. Yes. You know. So yeah. it's the one industry that you're kind of guaranteed. Yeah. It's recession proof. Yes. It yeah. really is like, and even, you know, like even at the time when after the C word or whatever, mm. when we reopened, yeah. um, I was expecting it to be really quiet because I was thinking no one's going to come back into the salon. Completely opposite. Everyone everybody, was dying to get back in. Everybody was dying yes. to get everything yes. done. At, so everybody had roots down to here, yes. grey, everything was gone. Yeah. We were dying to get yeah. back in. So it was salon. just, it was just amazing. And then it just really took off then from yes. 2020 on. So literally, no, so from the house, like, um, when I was in the house, that was back in 2010. So the kind of built, built from then. And so did you set up your own salon then ever? I, or had you always been in the house? No, so I was in the house for about six years. But after about a year of doing lashes, I decided to start building my brand Yeah. Um, from the house as well. And then I actually started educating people from the house as well. Okay. Because I had in my head, my course was so bad. I started taking notes literally from day one when I started working. And I was writing notes of how I set up my Really? area how I did this how I did that so I was writing constantly recording what I was doing waiting for my next client to come in so I always had a book of notes really? every single day it was silly like but it's not now because that's what I have set up my manuals from yeah. but at the time I was just writing a note going you know okay prep the client cleanse the lashes what works what doesn't work I was keeping record that's of amazing. everything from that is amazing. literally that's a brilliant idea yeah, from scratch you know, so I had all these ideas, piece of paper in a box, like literally I'd write, I'd find one piece of paper on the ground that the kids were scribbling on, I'd write just a few bits of it came into my head. Oh my God, that's so clever. all of those pieces of paper. And over months and months and months, I decided, right, well, I'm going to start building and trying to promote training courses. Now, I wasn't accredited. I didn't have any, you know, accreditation but, but behind me at the time. But you had such a terrible But I had the knowledge. Yeah. I had the knowledge and I had the knowledge of what I didn't get in my first course. So I started training just a couple of girls, people that I knew that I was like, maybe she'd be interested, contacted a few girls and said, look, I'm going to be running courses. Super cheap. It was probably I gave them the price of the kit that I was buying yeah. at the time and trained these girls up. Now, I've since obviously certified them because I'm accredited yes. now. Yeah. But um, at the time. Yeah. But these girls are still doing lashes. That's what oh, it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Like they have built these businesses up from my house, like from love their it. sitting room. And um, so, yeah, so I start building the training element of it from the house. And then I start renting the yoga room in Rat House that, that my your friend, friend has. Yes. yes. And I start doing group training then. And that's when I started looking into getting the stuff accredited and all my course insured okay. and all that kind of stuff because it, I could see this interest there. You said this is going to be a business. Yes. Yeah. I knew like literally from, I knew from do, the day, day one, one when I started doing lashes, I was going to end up teaching. It was in, it was inside yeah. me. And I you knew. loved the teaching and the, yes. the training in the last job. Yeah. So you knew I really want to get into yes. this. So I decided then in 2016, 2015, I'm going to look for a new salon. I'm going to look for a salon. I need to get out of the house. Okay. The kids, the youngest ones were starting school. I'd done my time in the house. Yeah, you're Do you like, know? Okay, it's ready to go. Yes, now. I'd yeah. built the business up. I had my clients and I said, right, I'm going to just take the leap and just go and look for a salon. Found the salon and literally within a couple of months I had it open. And I've just never looked back. It's been absolutely mad, insane since I opened. Oh, so we're seven years open in Retote now. We opened a new salon in Kilkenny two years ago. And that's the same. It literally opened and just took over Kilkenny City. Like, it's insane. God. Yeah. And what, what way did you start the model? So when you open a salon, did you just train up the girls? They worked for you. What way did that So what work? I did was I started on my own. Yeah. And then I trained a girl that just came to me one day saying, she worked in Centra in the deli. And she was like, I have a real passion for beauty. Any chance you could train me up? And it was getting so busy that I needed in somebody else. Person. But I didn't want to ever go down the route of employing people because mm. I had five young kids. And to yeah. be honest, I just stress. didn't need the yeah. stress. Yeah. So I decided to um, teach these girls. So I had one initially, um, taught her from scratch and she became self-employed. So I helped her set up her business as a self-employed um, lash technician. Okay. And I helped her with all the steps, like all the paperwork, everything that I had done. So done I had already. all of the knowledge yes. there. Um, so she came into the salon with me absolutely thriving. So I had the booking system in place. I got her all the clients. She just arrived and sat at a bed. 
So I worked out a thing. So they were like, she was a contractor for my brand, yeah. but could only work with my brand. That was in our contract, you know. So she was under the Lash Dolls brand um, as a self-employed contractor, but she would get a commission basis. Brilliant. So I'd pay her on commission or mm. I'd get the commission basis type and thing. She, yeah, because yes. you got all the yeah. clients, your salon, your bed, your everything. Yes. Yeah. So we had, that was the first girl. Then it just got busier and busier and busier. And I ended up having four girls in my tote. And was it all lashes? Lashes and brows. Lashes and brows. Yeah. So that's how, like, and it's an insane thing that we had like four girls in a small, tiny little village just solely doing lashes and brows and building their own businesses under my brand. Oh my God. And I still have the same girls there seven years later. That is incredible. Yeah. That is, inc I love it though. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And they were all people maybe that didn't have maybe other skills or, you know, didn't have yeah. a background. This was opening doors for them. Yeah. They just had it. They knew they wanted to do something different. Like one yeah. of the girls had trained in nails donkey years ago, but was working in the deli in the shop and just knew me from coming in out. She actually thought I was a personal trainer at the time yeah. because I was in the gym so much. Yeah. But we got chatting about beauty and then I said, no, I'm sure after opening the salon, why don't you come up? And I actually gave her a free area to rent for a few weeks to see if she could build up a little bit of business for nails. And she came in and she was just a doubt, you know, when you just yeah, meet just somebody, knew, yeah. I just knew by her. And like, I didn't take anything off her for a couple of months then. She was there building a little kind of client base. And I said to her one day, listen, I'm gonna start training you into lashes yes. and brows. So we did that and she was so fearful. She was like, no way, I'm not doing lashes. And now that's her sole business in my place. Lashes and she's been there seven years now and she's amazing. It's an incredible story. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I love it. And I love that you give other people opportunities. I think that's so important to yeah. give them back, give them back, including oh, people, yeah. bringing people along on your journey. Yes. That is really, really important. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. And then now you have another new what is it called? I had it written, Teen Talks. Oh, so we have. Let's talk about that yes. now. I think this is really important. Yeah. This is, I love this. So that business grew, grew, grew. So the business has grown. Like I decided last year that I was going to take a little step back out of the business to try and grow the business because I, was, I found I kept getting sucked back in yeah. to my clients. And I was working 11 hours a day doing lashes. I've done it for since 2009. Yeah. I've like I've been growing the training element of the business. So I've been really pushing my courses for the past year. And the course, the training academy element of the business has gone from like nearly 100% um, jump really? in students. Yeah, like it's absolutely insane. But I give the same dedication that I gave to Linda to every one of my other students. Yeah. I've helped them build their business. Off. I help them with everything. Like they will literally text me, Karen, listen, think of a good name for my business, will you? Or like, like I mean, yeah. that's how yeah, personal it is. It. Yeah. I'm so into it and I'm so into helping them. It's just unbelievable. And watching them grow, yeah. like, is insane. Because there was probably nobody on your, I know your dad set up his own business, um, but that was very, very different. Yes. There was nobody to kind of lead the way for you in that beauty industry. No. Because a lot of people won't share their knowledge and they yeah. won't bring people along. I see that. Like, yes. There's a fear there that they're going to take my yeah. business. And Of course. But you, you didn't, you chose, Never had to, that. You yeah. chose to bring people along yeah. and educate them and help them. Yeah. And I remember people saying to you, why are you training people up to do what you're doing? Yeah. And I'm like, but why not? There is so much business out there. Business out there, right? You will find your own tribe. It's like my clients, they will only come to me. I've had the same clients since 2009. I only work probably a half day a week now doing lashes. But they won't let you go and you no. won't let them go. So I have yeah. to go and do them because people will flock to you for you. And I, yeah. I tell all my students this, you know, you have to have, you know, a good, good business page on Instagram. Yeah. You have to have a good business edit. You have to have a passion for what you're doing. But you also need to be yourself because people are going to come back to you, especially 100%. regardless. You might do a shit service one month and the following month it could be amazing, but they still love you. Yeah. And you've built that connection with them. Yeah. And I think that is so important. And it definitely yeah. helped me build my business 100%. It, it does because I always say it's like putting money in the bank with your with your clients yeah and then you build up this trust and then if there's one time you you have to let them down or you have to cancel an appointment or whatever it is if you've built that up over years they're like oh it's grand yes see you next time yeah they trust you yeah um, and that is important and the yes. the whole thing i always say there's enough business out there for us all there is and like i even say to the girls like it doesn't matter what location you're in you could be trained i train probably a maximum five girls from wexford every single week and they're all in different parts of Wexford. Some are in Wexford town. Wexford is a massive hole for yeah. training. The girls are mad into makeup and you know all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, every one of them are thriving. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know, there's like enough there's, for everybody. there's enough for everybody. It doesn't matter. You'll always have your client base who will get you more clients from their friends and family. Yeah. So there's always that circle. And then there's so many people out there like why? There is no need to be afraid yeah. of competition. Competition is really good. I do not look and I have never looked at one other per person's page and went, oh my God, I wish I was doing that. I just focus on my own business and I always have. That's really good. I just work on my own business. I'm confident enough to know who I am. Yeah. And like I bring that to my students as well and I teach them. You know, you need to be confident in what you're doing before you start selling your products or yeah. selling yourself. And you have products as well, don't you? I have a full product line, so we have a full range of products. Did you bring for... any with you? No, oh, you sorry. <laughs> um, we have a full product range for um, aftercare for clients when they come to the salon. Okay. But we've also got like a full product range for professional use for all of the lash checks that train oh with me. God, so they you. reorder. So we have, I have a good, maybe four different kind of sources of income. And I think that's really important yeah. within a business as well. Yeah. Um, especially like as you're trying to grow your business obviously starting out you need to be working in the business mm. but now that I'm kind of taking that little step back I have put like 100% of my energy into the training element of the business now because yeah. everything else is taken care of I have all the girls set up they're all happy Yeah, you have once all they're that. happy and I'm happy I can then push on and start working on other things and I think that was one thing that people maybe who didn't diversify during COVID, if they have one thing, like say if you were only doing lashes yes. and then there was no physical contact, yeah. you had products you could sell. Yes. Um, so people maybe could do, try to do them at home, I don't know, but there was products yes. there. Oh yeah. And that is important to have, look at your business and you're right when it's established. Yeah. So when you have a base, then you can start branching out. Yeah. But I think people maybe try to do too much too, too soon. Too soon. I'd have students even that would train with me literally for one course. And while they're there, they're like, right, I'm going to book him to next week because it was so good today. I'm like, no. You're not going to book it me next week. What you're going yeah. to do is you're going to focus on this treatment first. You're going to get really good at it. Yeah. And then you're going to send me all your case studies and then we're going to have a little chat when you're finished that. Yeah. Do you know, and because... Then you can start. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I always say to them, like, there's no point in you having 10 skills and be absolutely not great at everything. You want to be amazing at one, two or three things and yes. not be mediocre at 10. Yeah. And I'd even rather be brilliant at one. Yes. And But then when you build that, then you build you move on, on and yes. build your business. And yeah. Because I always say, if your business isn't growing, it's dying. Yeah. And it, it has to continue. It has grow. to, yeah. And you have to look at what can we do better? Where can we make more money? Where yes. can we be more profitable? Where yeah. can we, what other services can we yes. deliver? That's so important. Yeah. And I love that you did that and you're still doing it. Yeah. Still doing it all I'll the time. stop. I just yeah. never stop. My it's brain just brilliant. doesn't switch off. It's yeah. insane. It's good though. Yeah. I oh, know it's amazing and, and I, I think love that's it. a real, like, but if you look back on your history, because I'm always fascinated by people when I look back, it's like, you were always like that. Yeah. When you get a job, you kind of do it, do really well, excel in it, and then you're like, okay, I want this now. Yeah. It's the total opposite yeah, of Yeah, completely what you different. Were doing. I just, I was really confident growing up. So I think I always had, I'd go into job interviews and go, they need me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. You had that and, self yeah. belief. And I'd kind of be in there going, like, like I'm definitely going to get this. Yeah. And I always got the job. I yeah. always got the job. Like, I even went for a sales rep job one time. I'd never done sales in my life. And you got the get job. Get me a company car. Everything. And I found out I was pregnant about two weeks later and I just went to them and said, look, I'm really sorry. Like, I but I had this. that job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Never done anything like that. No experience. It's a great way to be. Not everybody yeah. has that. No. Um, they really, really don't. Yeah. A lot of people don't. I, I would be confident too. Yeah. Um, but I see people don't have that level I know. of confidence. It's brilliant. Did yeah. you instill that into your children as well? Yes. Yeah. Hopefully I did. Yeah. yeah. They're still quite young. Now, my oldest lad, he's 23 and he yeah. would be quite confident as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping the rest of them, and that's a lot of the reason why I do what I do. It's yeah. for them. Like I'm a single mom, like so mm. they're with me 24 seven, but they're watching me build these businesses and growing and constantly working on my business, but even in my home. Yeah. Like even if yeah. you think they're not, they are. Yeah. They're learning about work ethic. They're learning so much that you, even just by like unconsciously yes. they're learning. Yeah. So there's no way that they won't have that. No. You probably got some of it off your dad. It sounds like you did. Yeah. Um, but then you're then passing that down yeah. through the exactly. generations. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. And um, tell us a little bit about this teen yeah training that you're doing I, okay this is absolutely fat and i think it's brilliant because yeah. i think it stems back to there's a cohort of kids in all societies yeah that they're not maybe into school or not academic or don't enjoy school yeah. and where do they go yeah. and what do they do that's it um so tell us what, what you have so essentially like i was just contacted about two years ago by a couple of schools locally one in avon one in retote that had teen girls like that that were just not academic were struggling going to school every day, did not want to get up in the mornings to go into school because they were that stressed out about going mm. in because they just did not want to go. So the school kind of, I think, with career guidance and stuff like that, have been looking into helping these kids outside of 
the school environment to try and get them interested in something so that they can come back into the environment with something like an additional skill or something that's going to keep them. Yes, and it's going to keep them interested in coming to school every day or whatever. So we kind of, ha I had a chat with a couple of the teachers from the school and the career guidance teachers and I kind of came up with this plan of introducing a new teens course to our academy. Okay. Um, so what we do is we train teens from age 13 to 17, which the parents book on the course and the parents mostly come as the models on the day okay. as well. So it's really good. So I'm building a relationship with the mams, with the dads some of the time and the girls. So we're building this great little environment. Like, so what essentially That's what happens is super. we book them in on our training courses. Um, and these are all 13, 14, 15? 15, yes, yeah. all okay. the way up to 17. Um, so with the school's guidance as well, a few of them mm. had trained with me. One of them now works in the salon with me. She really? ended up, she wouldn't go back to school, but she ended up just coming into the salon with me. She's set up now self-employed. Oh, she God, is, God. she's only gone 18. Um, so she is now like literally starting to build up her little brand, build up her little business through my salon. And she's been doing that for two years. So she came in as like a, I suppose, work experience for about a year and a half with me. And I was just teaching her the ropes, going through everything. She was sitting beside me while I was working, watching me doing the post, but sending out stuff. What would have stock. happened to her, Karen, if someone didn't take her under their wing? Yeah. It's all those girls that I'm looking at that I'm saying, they're if nobody took her under her wing, yeah. she probably just would have left school. Yeah, and be sitting and at home. And then be sitting at home yeah. or, you know, in a job that she yeah. hates. She's a completely different person. When she started with me, she wouldn't even open her mouth in the salon. She used to sit there, come in and just take little notes and watch me or whatever. Now she, oh my God, she stands up when the clients come in. She's like, oh my God, how are you? Takes her coat. She just is like a different person now. That's so brilliant. that, after even only actually dealing with Kayla, like and having her in the salon, it just made me think like, how much, how can I help other people as well? Mm. Because there's so much of it and there's so many parents. There were so many parents contacting me directly. Listen, do you do courses for these teens or what, you know, my daughter or son is not interested in school and we need something for them. So I decided to develop this course um, for teens. Now it was very similar in terms of um, the same, obviously, theory part of the business and all that kind of stuff. I just give it to them, obviously, cheaper because they're in school. Yes. Um, but they get all the same information from me and they get the, exactly the same training, right? But I help them down with their social media. I help them with a little business structure, how to go back into the school environment to create their business in school. I love this, Karen. I um, just love it. So I've been doing that for nearly two years now and it's just gone through the roof. So I ha I'm now like training with Bernardo's. I have gotten a contract with the Loud and Monaghan um, Education Board now as well. Um, so the course but that I needed. have, yeah, it is, it is a hundred percent needed. Because we were chatting about that earlier on, like for kids that don't want to sit in a classroom, they're not able. Yeah, maybe they're very, like my youngest daughter is dyslexic. Yeah, and, and I know that she really struggles. And yeah, but what other options for her have are been, there? Yeah, and I have like my other three are so academic. Yeah, but I'm looking and I'm like, it's the, the school I know. Are like just yeah, she's just there's nothing for her. Yeah. and like if she grows up into a teenager like that, it's like. You could see how people could fall by the wayside. Yeah. Oh, totally. Because there isn't an option for no. them. No, and, and that's what happened. Them an option. Yeah, and that's what happened years ago. Yeah. You know, in school, like if you were not great in school, you were just kind of left to, yeah. you know, fend for yourself type of thing. Whereas I'm trying to really help these kids. Like, and yeah. to be honest, like the feedback that I'm getting from the parents and the feedback even from you the can students see themselves. When you're talking about oh it. my it's God, I just you so much yeah, energy and life. I just absolutely love it because they're so into it. Yeah. Some of them come in and they're like erect. They're literally just sitting there. I'm so nervous, but I just make it a really chilled environment. Yeah. I'm just myself and I'm just like, listen, I have kids. I have, you know, I know. there's teens and yeah. we'll only do a group of teens. So they're all together. And I kind of like have them introduce each other, you know, yeah, have a I'm, chat. Yeah. What he's up to, what class he's in. We just have a great little chat. That's for about two and a half hours or so. And then like the models will come in, whether it's their parents or whatever. Mm. And even that, the banter we have and the little connection that the parents are having with yeah. their kids like in that few hours is just unbelievable. Like Karen, I think this is going to take off because I think this should be rolled out all over the country. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm like having- really should. Yeah, I'm trying to get in now with, I'm just trying to get into the education system because yeah. it's very hard. You can it do, is. because I can be contacted by just say a school in Avon where they might have two teenagers. Then I could be contacted by a school in Glasnevin where they might have three or four teenagers. So I'm training six girls now from Monaghan. Okay. from a school in Monaghan, but they, the, the teacher just contacted me directly. Do you know, so there's nothing in the education system for this kind of thing, but I'd okay. love to. Yeah, you like, need I, to get yeah. in. You need to find out how you're I've been to talking about this for about four years. I know it is very yeah. hard to break into the education yeah. because they have like a, a structured yeah. syllabus. Yes, and like, that's this it. is all we do. Yeah.
And the thing about it is, like, our courses are fully accredited, right? So anyone that trains with us can go and get a within, job. With a certificate yes. that they can work. Yeah, they can go and get a job straight away. They can actually set up as self-employed. They can travel the world with our certificate. So it's, it's recognised worldwide. If they go to Australia for a year, they can bring their certificate and go and work as a lash tech That's or browse fantastic. or beauty. So it's absolutely amazing for them. Like, and you're kind of saving them before it gets too late, I think. Yes. But you know what? It's actually what I'm seeing and the feedback that I'm getting, like, they're leaving our course right they're buzzing to get going mm. they're making a little bit of money for themselves they're building their confidence they're meeting people every single day that they don't know whereas yeah. when they're with their friends and they're on their phones they're in that little bubble Absolutely. and they're not you know and they're yep. not getting out there whereas now they're meeting new people every day they're building a little bit of self-confidence they have a little bit of money at the end of the week their confidence has gone through the roof then they're going back into school with a diary and they're filling up their book with their all students. the friends yeah so they are buzzing to go into work, to school every day yeah. Do you know, so they're back in the frame of I'm in school now, I have to get through this class and then I can meet my friends in the hallway to take yeah. an appointment. But they're finishing school. Yes, but they're going back and they're getting stuck in and that they're absolutely loving it. Absolutely fantastic. I yeah. think that's just a great idea. Yeah. And that happened by chance or? It was something that was in my mind for a long time because of the way I kind of went through school and mm. just had no interest. I really, and the education side of things for me was where you I meant it. to be. Yeah. Um, it was something that I have been thinking about for years and just I've been doing little bits and pieces. I'm just so busy with everything yeah, I know. that I kind of try and implement things. Be like, I need five of me. Yeah, but yeah. I don't ever, and I was saying this to you earlier on, mm. I don't put pressure on myself. I, I say to myself, right, this is what I want to do. It might take me three years to get there, but I'll do it. Yeah. And the girls laugh at me in the salon because if I say something out loud, I do it. Yeah. Regardless if it takes it's me like five happening. minutes or five years. Yeah. I don't care. I'll I'm get gonna there. I'm going to get there. And I will do it regardless of how I get there, but I will. Yeah. Um, so I've decided from that because they're going so well and the amount of feedback and the positivity from the girls like the students, um, I've decided to start launching a Teen Chats um, on yes. live on Instagram. I loved this when you said yeah. it earlier on. I was like, I even love the whole thing, Teen Chats. Yeah, yeah. just like a bit of banter, do you yeah. know? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a student a month that has kind of come in and is excelled and just to show other people the difference in doing something that is not school related, but is going to bring you back into education, yeah. can teach it like, and have that little bit of confidence and you've got your bit of money. You know, like one of the girls, um, my first interviewer, that I'm going to, mm. the first girl I'm going to interview, she ha was, came to me when she was 13 and a half, going on 14. Um, she has done three courses with me in the space of a year and she has now the Atta converted into a lash and brow room. Oh my gosh. And she is fully booked. Like, so she comes home from school, does her lash sets in the evening, Every weekend she's doing lashes and she is fully booked. That is and she incredible. brings her diary into school and fills up her diary. And she's going to be my first uh, girl that That's I'm going to interview. Fantastic. And she's just amazing. And I, I said it before, but like what would have happened to these girls if yeah. they didn't have this? I know. And then they're showing other girls. Yes. You know, they're showing other girls, this is a way, this is what you can do. This is yeah. going to bring you, I'm sure the school are absolutely delighted. The schools that I'm dealing with, yeah, yeah, it is. Because they're seeing these girls come back in like different kids. Full of confidence. You know, full of confidence. Of and... I was saying on the other podcasts today, um, I went to the Pendulum Summit and John Lonergan, the um, governor of Mountjoy Prison right. was there. And he said that the one thing he saw consistently with young people coming into Mountjoy was a lack of connection. Right. And like when they fall off that, it's when it's that yes. the critical age, I think 13 yeah. to kind of 17. Yeah. But if there's something there for them or somebody yeah. to catch them somebody to kind of save them yeah and then they feel confident and they feel part of i can do this i can yeah. get back into school i can be part yeah. of society that saves yeah. them in many cases and i think that's the kind of link it that's is been missing yeah and like i think even for us when they're in that little group i only do about four students together they feel like they're part of a little community type yeah. of thing do you know and, and that then, sense of belonging that yes. stops them from growing because he was talking about you know the riots in dublin yeah and he says what would have made the men and women do that? Because this was their community. Right. But they didn't feel part of it. No. They didn't it. feel part of They're the They're disconnected. They're disconnected. Yeah. And that sense of connection yeah. with those girls yeah. and boys, I'm sure sometimes, yeah. in that little group, that gives them a sense of connection again yeah. and belonging and fitting in and, and important and able and yeah. all of the things that teenagers need. need. And totally. school should give 
but doesn't always. Yeah. Because if they're not academic, it's the other academic yeah. kids that have that feeling. It is. And these feel, I'm useless. Yeah. I do find now the schools are getting a little bit better yeah. because the teachers are younger now, they're kind of more in tune with what's going on. Yeah. You know, like we'd have teachers that come in to get their lashes done. Yeah. And like some of the students would be in, they're like, oh, hi, miss. And they're, yeah. like they're chatting away and then they're like, oh, I'm coming back here to do a course next week. And they're chatting away about that. It's so brilliant. there is that, it is, the care it is getting yeah. a little bit better. There still needs to be a lot of help for like that for teens in school yeah. that are just struggling with, I suppose, not even just getting into the beauty industry, for any industry. industry. Sh and, and it can yeah. be, it doesn't have to be beauty colleges. I'm even finding now we are getting about 60% of students that have left school, gone to a private college for beauty, are now coming back and training with us because they're not getting the business side what they need. Yeah. You know, so they're coming back and doing these smaller courses. They're getting fully accredited after they've sent their case studies and we have a little bit of a chat at the end mm -hmm. to make sure they're confident in what they're doing. Um, but yeah, they're like absolutely flying. Because that, that, I suppose that side of it is really important as well. How do I set up a business? Yeah. How do I book my first client? Yes. What do I use for my online? Actually, the girl that did my makeup today, like we were talking about an online booking, booking system yeah. for her. And she was like, I don't really know what to use. She's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so all that, you're giving everybody that information. Yeah. And helping I, them to yes. say, look, this is what I did. And yeah. this is what you should do. Yeah. And then they have you sort of to mentor them then yeah. forever it sounds yeah. like. Well, like, like these girls now they'd be kind of more interested in setting up their Instagram page so it's yeah. like how do I set up my page what do I call it like yeah. that they'd be texting me yeah. for ideas for names and everything which is amazing but um, as they get older and they're yes. in their 20s and then they want to yeah. have a business and establish oh, yeah. themselves that's yeah. where you're still there yeah. for them but I have now the girls that trained with me back in 2015 do you know what I mean? 16, they're also there. And now they're looking for proper, like, they're looking to really restructure. I've been in um, some salons and Wicklow and stuff, helping them restructure their business after 20 years. Wow. Do you know, with the kind of, like, business plan and the structure that I have within my business. So I've been helping other companies as well, which is another thing I want to yeah, get down, yeah. the, like, down the road. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, you could literally do anything within the beauty industry or any industry if you're confident if enough you, and have... Yeah. You have the work you have the, Yes. You have that yeah. and you want to put your mind to something, you will achieve yeah. it 100%. You just have to put energy behind That's it. That's it, yeah. I know we, we, we did a couple of mentoring courses together, but I think that is important. It is. It's, and then it's podcasts like this that show other people yeah. it can be done. Yeah. It is, even if you have five, five kids. Five kids. Yeah. yeah. Even if you have and you're a single man, you yeah. can still do so much. You can. All you have to do is have the will. That's it. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. incredible, yeah. Karen. It's so, so good. Ah, thank you. So what are your plans now, say, for the next? I know you've got 100. Yeah, yeah. I have millions <laughs> of plans. Now, so my plan going forward for the moment, I have just launched a Train the Trainer course. Okay. So this is where I'm kind of getting girls now in the beauty industry. It's an industry specific one. Okay. Because like that, I went and did my Train the Trainer. I did a QQI one yes. and it was yeah. it was a real generic kind of Train the Trainer. So when I left, I hadn't got a clue. Do you need to write a manual? How do you do this? How do that? So I've launched this train the trainer course, which sold out literally straight away. Um, it's running on the 31st of March is our first one. Okay. Um, so basically, the, anyone in the beauty industry can come train with us to become a trainer, essentially, for their business. So I'm going to teach them how I train, how to create a manual. I have done it literally step by step. So all the work is already done for them. It's just a matter of them coming in to learn Get how to teach people. Okay. Yeah. And where do people find you, this course, if they um, want? So on our website, which is lashdolls.ie or through Instagram, lashdolls underscore Ireland. All the information is there for all of our courses. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for that. And then obviously with the teens thing, it's something that I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on at the minute. Mm. So I am just working Always behind the scenes, I like I know, just I know. keeping trying to keep yourself yes. upscale, trying to keep everything going. Yeah, and if you look back on your, what are you? Must be fifteen years. Yeah, are you? I'm probably sure. ten years more, a little bit over ten years doing lashes in yeah. that kind of in industry. That. Yeah, and what do you think was the most important thing that you learned that you could share with people? Um, to just look after yourself, yeah. make sure that you in every way, like so. Obviously, you have to make sure that you're, you know taking care of yourself in terms of like your fitness yeah not all the time but like just even yeah, if you can get about this. Yeah, yeah like your sleep your fitness even just do a walk in the evenings anything yeah. just to get you out of that mindset of work because i found i got so engrossed in it's non-stop work, yes it's very difficult you to need stop. to have a little bit of time for yourself yeah. and um also just be yourself because like at the end of the day people are going to come to you for you yeah. Even though you have your business there. And I said that earlier on the, in the podcast, like, I think for me, I have built my business on me. Yeah. It's definitely worked around me, 
even though, like, you know, I've built this business because behind me. Because people, and I always say that, they, and some people won't like me, but that's okay, but I'm myself. Yeah. And the people that want to work with me will see me, yes. like me, and want that's to come it. and work with you us. You can never worry about other people. Yeah, there's somebody else for them. Yes, there's somebody that's else it. For them. But yeah. you just focus on yourself, work on your business, and don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Yeah. And you will just excel. Yeah, and you will. Yeah. And, like, I know we spoke about stress. Do you think exercise is a big deal to help you manage stress? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I for me, spin and I see yeah, I do my spin like yeah. most days. But um, yeah, I just think you need something. You need some kind of an outlet. Yeah. Like I was even really bad for years. I'd be on the bike and I'd have my phone there and I'd be literally answering texts while I was spinning. I do that, yeah. It's insane. That. Yeah. But now I've decided I come in now, I put my phone face down on the floor and I don't touch it for the hour because I literally couldn't concentrate when I was on the bike. You know, if you got a message, I'd be like, oh my God, I need to replace them now. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bad. I'm a disgrace. Yeah. So now I am um, this year. I try year, to put boundaries and I, I'm good for a while and then I yes, go back to my old no. ways. Well, I'm really trying now, hard, like you. Yeah. Like I keep going back, but now I'm really, this year I said, that's it. I need to, even the evenings now, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, but from about 10 o'clock because it was so bad, even over Christmas. Like I had students texting me. I had like people looking to book in course at 12 o'clock at night texting. Hey, I'm on your website and I'd respond. Yeah. I'd hear the phone buzzing in the locker and I'd be like, oh, oh there's something. Yeah. What is that compulsion? I don't know. It's like, I just, I'm just, we're just, the, we're just yeah. those like, type oh of God. people. Yeah. Answering the phone. Yeah. All the, like today, that phone hasn't stopped. Yeah. And every chance I get them on the phone. I know. It's very, yeah. very difficult. Yeah. To, and I think phones are brilliant and technology is brilliant, but you're right. The downtime is so important. Oh God, you have to have get it. burnt out. Yeah. And I felt it towards the end of last year. I was exhausted. Yeah. I was just like that every, if you asked me to move that pen, I felt like it was such a big I deal. I know, yeah. It, it, so I know that that's important. And I actually learned to swim last year. I oh, amazing. Swim, but I couldn't bring the phone into the pool. Right. So <laughs> it was the one time yeah. that I felt totally relaxed, even though I should have been yeah. terrified because I was really afraid of water. I nearly drowned when I was a child yeah. and I learned to swim. And the, the lady that was teaching me, and she was like, oh my God, you're such a growth. I learned in two lessons. Oh my God. But it was the only time I didn't have the phone. I know. Because I couldn't, because the phone would be yeah, ruined. Yeah. And I thought, I actually have a disease. And yeah. I cannot put that phone I know. Down. But we're all the same. Everybody's yeah. the same. You just have to, I suppose, train yourself bit yeah, by bit. To, to get off it. the phone. Yeah. Because it's an addiction. Oh, it's so hard. But it's so hard when you're in business. Yeah. Because you're trying to be that person that responds quickly yes. as well. Yeah. And you always, I always want to be on the other end of the phone for my students especially. Yeah. I'm always there for them. So I tell them, text me whenever you want because I'm always on my phone. And yeah. I am. Because I'm always on yeah. my phone. And then you're like, why did I tell them yeah, that? Yeah, because then they're texting me. 12 yeah. But it's grand. I still, sometimes I might open it because I'm half asleep. Yeah. And then I reply straight away the next morning. But like that, and I'm trying really now to just put the phone so on silent the same, no. and I'm having amazing sleeps. I sleep great anyway, but now I'm like in a coma really? when the phone's not buzzing beside yeah, me, you know, it, so. It's a, it is an addiction. And like, because I've built up the habits with my clients now, they'll just ring me anytime yeah, to ring me and so I'll answer them. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. And other people are like, I wouldn't dare. And I'm like, oh my God, oh, I, I would do, not yeah. answer them. Yeah. So I'm the same. I have to discipline myself more. Yeah. Because I, fi I find, like we're five years, we'll be five years in August and amazing. I'm like, yeah, last year I was tired at yeah. the end. I was like, I, yeah, I can't do that again. No, because the busier you're getting, anybody. the busier you're getting, the, obviously the busier your phone's going to be. Yeah. Do you know? So, so you have to take yeah, that little bit of control to. back. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, and I love talking to people because it's like, yeah, now I'm making my accountability yeah. buddy. Yeah. Do you see me? I know. Get off yeah. that phone. I know, that's yeah. it. It's yeah. tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, I, I absolutely, I, I will have you back on because I'm dying to find out more about that teens yes. talk. So people will find you on Instagram, Lash Dolls. They can see the teens talk. Yes. They're going to be on we're there. We're going to be on there once. We're going to do maybe twice a month. And if anybody that has a contact in the education board, yes. I think you should reach out oh to. Oh my God, yeah. Because I think it's yeah. an invaluable I have a few service. contacts that I've been kind of trying to kind of wiggle my way yeah, in there. Yeah. It's very hard. It is just so, but so, it's so hard. It's so important. It's, a, yeah, great, it's it is. a great thing for kids. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. So I will be watching you and stalking you, Karen. Thank I think you. you're going to be all over the world. Thank you. your lash dolls. Yes. And the next time you're on, bring your product. I will. I bring definitely will. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I forgot so, all about that today. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. That was amazing.